Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, and today I'm going to review the Northern Brewer Craft Beer Making Kit. So let's go. As any of you that watch the channel regularly know, I love home brewing kits. I've tried out several different varieties. I'm always looking for new ones. So it made a lot of sense a while back when I, uh, I broke a one gallon glass fermenter Decided I was going to need to get another one, and I thought, well, what the heck, just go ahead and buy a full home brewing kit. Um, I got this particular one from Northern Brewer. I've never tried one of their kits. Uh, also, too, it comes with other things. I can always use extra, uh, you know, backup pieces of equipment or what have you. So I went with this Northern Brewer craft beer making kit. It's a one-gallon kit. Let's see what we have inside. Um... First thing we have is the one gallon fermenter, which is what I'm looking for. Um, it's glass. Like I said, I broke the last one, but again, if you're just starting off in home brewing, these things are perfect. Uh, it comes with the tubing, which we'll need for or what's called a racking cane. This allows you to transfer uh, this from the fermenter to uh, bottles when it comes bottling time or if you had another fermenter if you did a secondary fermentation um, also with it is something called a bottling wand this helps you instead of just pouring beer into a bottle uh, of beer this allows you to fill it this controls the flow this allows you to fill from the bottom up you don't stir up the beer you don't oxidize it as much um, that is something that can, uh, when you come filling time after fermentation, that's something that can throw the taste of beer off. So uh, one of these comes in handy. You don't have to have it, but that's always an option. Um, also inside the rest of our part, we have a bottle capper. We have some bottle caps. They have a non-rinse cleanser inside. They have a lid and an airlock for our... Uh, Glass fermenter, it's pretty much a complete kit. Um, then we have the recipe kit. This particular recipe is the caribou slobber. It's a brown ale, um, has all the ingredients we need. And then last but not least is all the instructions, pamphlets, books, or pamphlets and stuff. Um, not only telling you about how to make this beer, but kind of introducing you to the Northern Brewer uh, ecosystem. Uh, Northern Brewer is a little different than um, let's say Mr. Beer, Brew Demon, uh, Craft Brew, some of those other home brewing kits. They, those uh, companies just pretty much sell small home brewing kits for beginners. Northern Brewer has these, you know, this kit's a, kind of a beginner kit, but they sell all the way up to, you know, people doing home brew competitions, uh, if you want to start a nano brewery or a brew pub, they sell small one, one and two barrel systems. Um, they do some professional level stuff there. They sell professional level equipment. You can buy 50 pound bags of malt, what have you. So Mr. Brewer or Northern Brewer is kind of the step up when you're going from a, a Mr. Beer or a Brew Demon kit. They, they progress, so they have an infinite line of products, which is great. Well, now that we've got all our equipment out, let's brew our beer with our Northern Brewer Kit. All right, so time to brew some beer. I've got everything out of our recipe kit. Real quick, I want to go over what we have inside. Uh, we have our pelletized hops. We're going to do two hops, hop addition in this beer. Uh, we have a pack of active brewing yeast. It says on the bottom, English ale, which is appropriate for doing a brown ale. Uh, next we have our, what are called specialty grains. This brew is uh, what they would call a partial mash. We're going to uh, use some uh, actual real grain in there. We're going to uh, mash this. We're also going to use a malt extract. Uh, this is kind of a hybrid between what you do with like a Mr. Beer kit where it's a hot malt extract. It just has all the fermentables in the can. And it's a hybrid between that and then like an all grain brew that you'd have at a brewery. So this is called a partial mash. And so it has our grains here. We have our malt extract. 
They uh, also give us what are called fizz drops. Basically, they're basically uh, little sugar pills. Um, this will get used for bottling. Uh, when we come to bottle, most of the sugars are fermented out during fermentation. But we want to kick fermentation off again in that bottle because we need CO2 for carbonation. That's what these are for. We'll uh, add these in come bottling time. Uh, also, something I thought was pretty neat they left in here was uh, some bottle labels for your bottles of beer when it comes time bottling. Uh, they have these labels and they have spots where you put in the ABV and you know, write what kind of style, leave whatever notes, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, last but not least, they give you a bag. Uh, what we're going to do here is I've got a gallon of water. We're going to start off our brewing process by turning this on to medium heat. I'm going to put these grains in this sack and then we're going to dip this in kind of like a tea. We're going to make basically a grain tea. Um, we'll leave that in for 20 minutes while the water heats up and then uh, then we'll go to our boil, add our extract and go to the boil. So let me put this in, we'll get our grain steeped for 20 minutes and then we'll come back to set up our boil. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes, our water's been he heating up, so it's time to take out our grain bag. We will just want to let it drip over, get all that excess liquid out. You don't want to squeeze the bag because you get some uh, tannins off the grains that can throw, give you a little off taste. I'm just going to let this drain a little bit. Uh, while I'm letting this drain, real quick, while I was waiting for this to heat up, I went ahead and took our non red sanitizer, filled up my fermenter, put a little on top of my airlock and cap. Uh, anytime you're doing water prep like this or whatever, take the time, go ahead and knock out your sanitation, then makes your life a little easier. All right, so we're done with that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn up the heat on our liquid here and we're going to bring it to boil. That's important for sanitation purposes. Uh, if there's any bacteria or anything in that grain, we go ahead and take care of that. Once we bring it to a boil, we're going to turn the heat off and then we'll come back to add our malt extract. You don't want to do that while the heat is on because you may end up scorching some of those sugars on the bottom, give, give them a little off taste. So whenever you add malt extract, whether it's liquid or powdered malt extract, make sure you turn off the heat. Once we add the extract, we'll bring her back up to a boil again, and that's when we'll come back to do our hop additions uh, during two points for a 60 minute boil. So let me get this up to a boil, add the extract, and then we'll come back for our hop additions. All right, so we've got our beer, or what officially it would be called now a wort. We've got our wort back up to a boil. We are going to boil this for one hour. There's, couple, there's several different reasons why we do that. Uh, one of them is just for sanitation purposes. Obviously, for boiling it, we're not worried about contamination or whatever. Also, two, we are doing our hops additions during the boil. The boiling process helps extract flavor, aroma, bitterness out of the hops. Hops play an important part of beer, so we want to get all that goodness out of the hops. Uh, at the start of the boil, we're going to add seven grams of our Willamette uh, hops into the boil. Uh, one thing to note when doing these hop additions, um, it will foam up the brew. So you want to make sure anytime you're doing one of these beers, you want to make sure your brew kettle's bigger than, than what you're boiling. I'm doing a one gallon boil, but this is a three gallon pot. So I've got plenty of room. I'm not worried about boil overs. Uh, also too, while we're here, I want to discuss the uh, instructions here, I was just looking through the instructions here and the pack that they give with you. I think Northern Brewer does a real good job. These are very thorough instructions, uh, make things fairly simple. They talk you through it. One of the things I noticed missing though, and I've even looked online, is I could not find the information on what the ABV of our finished beer is supposed to be. I don't even see notes about specific gravity. They didn't give us a hydrometer. And if you're new to brewing, you wouldn't know about this stuff and wouldn't even think about it. So I was kind of disappointed in that, you know, this is a one gallon brew kit, kind of implied for beginners. The instructions, I think, do a good job of talking about everything else, but that was a little disappointing. They did not leave anything about the ABV. They did have in there a formula where, you know, you could take however much malt extract per gallon and kind of figure it out. 
But remember, we added some uh, some grains in there in a partial match, and we could have got some gravity points from that. So I, it, it kind of left it a little incomplete. Once you get brewing down and become a more serious brewer, you'll be able to figure this stuff out on your own. But for a beginner, I think it's a little tough. So anyway, we're going to let this continue to boil for 45 minutes, and then we'll come back then and do our next hop addition. All right, so it's been 45 minutes. It's time to do our last hop addition with 15 minutes left in the boil. We're going to add 3.5 grams of Willamette hops to the boil. Make sure we get everything out. We'll give it a quick stir. All right. And from here on out, we're going to boil for another 15 minutes. After the, the boil is done, we're going to turn off the heat and we're gonna, going to cool this wort. Now, according to the instructions, the way they suggest is that you would put this in your sink in an ice bath and you would leave it covered and let it cool for 30 minutes. Um, weird, I'm not going to do it like that, and, and here's why. When you leave it covered, you, you're, yes, you're keeping things out. You, you want to make sure you don't get any any airborne pathogens, what have you, any bacteria get in there. But if you keep it covered, you're going to keep the heat in. It's just going to take longer to cool. Also, too, we're wanting to cool to an exact temperature. What we're really wanting to get down to is roughly room temperature, you know, somewhere around 75 degrees or so. That is the proper temperature to pitch yeast. So when the boil's done, I'm going to throw this in the ice bath. You can follow the instructions. Feel free. The, you know, these are experts. I'm just telling you what I've done in other brews. Um, we're going to cool that down to room temperature. We're going to put into our sanitized uh, fermenter and then we'll pitch our yeast. And that's where I'll come back and we'll wrap up the video and talk about the rest of the process out and just kind of review the kit as itself. So uh, I'll come back after we pitch the yeast. Alrighty, so we finished our boil. Um, we went ahead and cooled our wort down. Um, we did lose some volume in the boil, so we had to fill up. Uh, it says in the instructions you want to fill to this one gallon mark. We were down to about here, so we had to add additional cold water. Uh, you want to get, like I said, you work pitching the temperature of this work down about 75 or so, a little lower. Uh, we are go I went ahead and pitched the yeast. Um, like I said, in the instructions, they say nothing about the ABV of this beer. They say nothing about gravity points. I went ahead and did a gravity reading. We came out at 1.062. Uh, if we get a finishing gravity around 1.020, we're looking at the mid fives, five and a half percent alcohol by volume. If we got it all the way down to 1.010, we'd be looking at 6.6, 6.7 percent alcohol by volume. So, just to kind of give you a, a frame of reference, of what we're looking at. ABV wise, um, we are going to let this ferment for two weeks. Uh, then we are going to bottle. According to the instructions, we will bottle. Um, once we have the beers bottled, we go leave them. We leave them out at room temperature to condition, and then after two weeks, we will be ready to throw in the refrigerator and enjoy. So you got about a month before this is ready to drink. Uh, quick note on the bottling. Uh, it doesn't say it in the instructions. It did say on the side of the box um, that the, uh, they suggest 12 ounce bottles. Um, the carbonation drops, the fizz drops, one of those per 12 ounce bottle. So if you have 16 ounce bottles or the 22 ounce bomber bottles, uh, because again, the, the kit didn't come with bottles, so you're, you, you, they suggest that you save some beer bottles. So if you go to a different size, adjust accordingly on the, uh, the carbonation tabs. Um, overall, I think this is a nice kit. Um, it is just the notch above the very beginner. This, because it's a partial Nash, it's a few more steps, a little more work than the Mr. Beer Brew Demon style kits. Um, they have additional kits. It, you know, once you've done this and now you've got your fermenter, airlocks, cap, you have all that stuff. They have a ton of other recipe kits they sell. Uh, I believe they also sell um, clone brews, like whatever your favorite beer. They may do a, a clone of, 
you know, a beer from Stone Brewing or something, something like that. So they have a ton of variety of beers. If you like this kit, want to keep making them like the beer it produces, uh, what have you. Like I said, a little disappointed with the whole thing about not telling us about the ABV and the, the specific gravity, what have you. But uh, overall, nice kit. Uh, I will come back to do a tasting video when it's ready to drink, so I'll... Uh, so you want to keep out on that here another month or so. Also, uh, because I finally got around to Northern Brew Kit, I'm going to do for the holidays a uh, a gift recommendation of some of the top. Uh, do a video on the top home brewing kits for beginners. Keep your eye out on that. Um, that being said, hope you like this video. If you do, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. And unfortunately, I don't have a beer, but I'll still say until next time, bottoms up.